Welcome to the College of Education 10-Minute Research Break, a podcast devoted to highlighting research by Illinois State University's College of Education faculty, staff, and students. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and take a break with us. Hello, I'm Trisha Class. Today's guests are Neil Sappington and Diane Gardner in the Educational Administration and Foundations Department. They teach in the areas of P-12 administration, organizational theory, leadership, and assessment. Well, welcome, Neil and Diane. Thank you for talking to me about your article. Thank you. In this article, you cite the need, question the assumptions about the symbiotic relationship between professional development and school improvement. Can you talk about the action research project you developed? Yeah, it was a project that we developed at the master's level, and it requires students to analyze their school improvement plans. So they're using primary artifacts of their school, and we provide them information to work in teams of two, possibly sometimes three, to spend quite a bit of time looking at their school improvement plan, compare what the literature says about school improvement planning and where their schools are at in addition to to that. In addition to the analysis of the school improvement plan, we also have them participate in a participatory action research project where they evaluate their school's professional development program. And they do this by interviewing uh, someone at the central office level uh, that's knowledgeable professional development and somebody at the building level, usually their principal, and then two teachers. And from the data they gather, both in artifacts and interview data, they categorize the professional development that's offered in their school by a conceptual framework that came out of Diane's article that looks at professional development in one of four frameworks. Can you explain those two dimensions that end up in a nice four grid? Well, what we were looking at, we were observing as evaluators of professional development in a statewide project. And as we started to look at the way professional development was actually happening in the schools uh, coming out of that, that project in all kinds of areas around the state, from the city of Chicago to very, very small rural districts in southern Illinois and everything else that you can imagine. We found in our initial cut that we could describe the professional development in most schools along two approaches. The first one was, did uh, was the professional development intended for a single practitioner and or multiple practitioners? So there was a, a single practitioner would be, of course, the very traditional professional development where teachers volunteer volunteer because it's something of interest to them. And again, this is where the assumption that this will uh, influence school improvement has been made, but but we know that that's it's often an erroneous assumption. So we had people in that single tier that were participating as individual teachers. And then the next tier would be that there were multiple members, including possibly teams. So we'd be looking at projects where there'd be administrators, other school staff, an attempt to convene several teachers that might be working on something together. Then the other dimension of the grid had to do with whether that professional development was seen as a kind of a one-shot deal. Again, the traditional model, a volunteer teacher shows up to go to a workshop of interest on math and science education, for example, in, in this particular project. But in this upper tier, we were looking at those kinds of projects that saw people performing, you know, working in that way with these one-shot workshops and other professional development programs that were quite intentional about convening people over time. Time. We see this now in, in the scholarship and in practice in, in the idea of a professional learning community, for example. So we found that we were able to fill that gr- every quadrant of that uh, four square with some teachers in some of the projects, even finding some applications where it may be okay for teachers to be sole volunteers. For example, science teachers that are in a rural district and have no colleagues may be able to join a professional development network, and then that network becomes their PLC. So we've looked at all these different flavors of professional development in Illinois that were being funded through this project. After you get them in the four square, then the question is, what were the results related to that four square where they were in terms of professional development and then the level of school improvement that they were in. Yeah, we took a look at the school improvement planning process of the 78 schools that were represented in the sample. And two individuals, Dr. Paul Baker and I, read each student's work. And from the data that they gathered, both in school improvement planning and professional development analysis, 
we categorize the schools as either stuck or having limited connections, transitional or systemic. And really, a stuck school is one, and that's borrowed from Susan Rosenholtz's work, those categories. But the school that's stuck really doesn't have anything going on. They might have teachers going to workshops. The school improvement plan is basically a shelf document. It really doesn't have much life. And really, things are not moving, doing anything to move that school forward. In a limited connection school, there's some things going on. They might have some people interested in critical thinking or maybe DeFore's work in professional learning community. But really, there's nothing on. Uh, ongoing that's taking place either in planning or professional development. A school that's transitional is a school that has figured out that the the only way they're going to impact student achievement is making that symbiotic relationship that Holly and Valley talk about in the Darling Hammond's edited book, the symbiotic relationship between school improvement planning and professional development. And they, they have figured that out. They have professional development in place that supports their school improvement goals, but it hasn't been in place long enough to really be considered systemic. Schools that are systemic, and there are only two in the sample, unfortunately, are schools that have really figured this out, that the way to move a school forward impacting student achievement is through collaborative relationships that are ongoing with faculty being involved in school improvement planning, determining the professional development they need to move a school forward. So in that work, it's been going on for five or six years now. We have 78 schools represented in this particular article, and we categorize those schools, as I said, as being in one of four of those categories. Then further, we categorize schools as their geographic location as far as small town, rural, small city, suburban metro, or urban large city and looked at if there was any difference by in this school improvement planning combined with professional development in terms of geographic location. And your results, as you mentioned, only two schools were up at the highest level. Where were the majority of the schools? And what are the implications for your research and even preparation of teachers and school leaders? Well, unfortunately, most of the schools were in the bottom two categories of either being stuck or limited connections. The thing that stood out to us most clearly was the school that is most difficult to move forward as a high school because it's a, of its bureaucratic content focused department organization. And the schools that, that were systemic, and I think I misspoke, I think there were actually three of them, were all elementary. And so it, it's telling to say, you know, since Illinois got involved in mandated school improvement and planning back as a result of the Legislation passed with Senate Bill 730 immediately after Nation at Risk. Disturbing to think that all this effort and money that's been spent, it hasn't had a greater impact. Some of the courses you teach, do you address some of these? Yes, when you talk about professional development, I would say that it's a kind of a thing that's been going on. What, what the findings of the study show is that even though we've been writing for 25 or 30 years in the scholarship about how to do good professional development that can really move student achievement somewhere, um, we can't do it in the old ways. So it's, it's really important that our leadership preparation projects have a chance to do that. In my own project, and I know Neil's done some of the same, my own courses and Neil's as well, will link uh, professional development to some student achievement data, understanding teacher learning and implementation. And there's more and more out there that enables us to think about that in, in some new ways. The other thing I think that's noteworthy about this particular project is, remember that the students in this master's level course were very much involved in not only gathering, but developing the data, so that they were looking at their own school improvement planning process, they were looking at the professional development in their own schools or districts, and these are master students, and most of them are still in the classroom, they're teachers, and they're looking at what the leaders in their schools and districts have done to support their professional learning in ways that's intended to move the teacher learning agenda forward and really are able to use that framework to say, you know, this isn't what's happening in my school and district. And it begins to help them imagine what it will be for them to be the principal, for them to be the superintendent leading, among other things, professional learning for for the staff and teachers and other professionals in the district or school. Real good example of tying together research theory and scholarship. Thank you so much for today's conversation. I would encourage others to read the article written by you and your colleagues and look forward to some future research from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The full citation of today's article is Sappington, Pacia, Baker, and Gardner, 2012, The Organized Contradictions of Professional Development and School Improvement, International Journal of Educational Leadership Preparation, Volume 7, Number 1. 
The citation can also be found at our website, coe.ilstu.edu slash research slash podcast. Join us for future Research Break podcasts. This podcast is sponsored by Illinois State University's College of Education, where we strive to assure that all students realize the democratic ideal through our teaching, research, and service to the field of education.